Otto, why is my chat a, bu a buzz? I'm about to reproduce if you want to watch. Is it cool? <laughs> wow, that is fucking sick! What? That's so goddamn cool. Hello, I'm Automated. I'm the maker of Crewlink, which is the Among Us proximity voice chat app. I'm also a coding streamer on Twitch, and I'm also a member of the offline TV and Minecraft server. But I wasn't always a member of the server, and this is the story of my master plan to get whitelisted. So chat, the turtle gambit. Raise your hand if you know what the turtle gambit is. We're going to code a turtle, which is this little dude right here, and then get Ludwig to install this turtle on the offline TV server. And the turtle is going to be a representation of me. So we're going to program it for me to be able to ro remote control it from not being inside the offline TV server. I did run into a couple problems when I was testing it out. First of all, the turtle actually requires fuel to move around in the form of coal blocks and stuff. So we're going to have to program the turtle to mine for its own fuel. So we're going to make a new project, chat. We'll call it Turtle Gambit. The first the most important step is to just be able to remote control it. I just have to have a rem like I want to I want like a little heads up display that I can see on my screen that will show me all the status about the whole turtle. I think we want a WebSocket server for this. So the WebSocket library, let's just do like some example code from this. All right. So this should be very very basic basic code. It should still work. Um, so now we have to write some code in Minecraft so that the turtle can connect to my remote control program. This is the remote control, basically. The turtle needs a remote control receiver. So let's edit this crafty turtle, I guess. So this should connect to the local web server that's running on my computer. If ws then ws, let's just copy this code. Oh, it worked. Oh, it worked. It worked, it worked. Look, it worked. Now I just have to make it transmit what its data is. So let's see. What kind of data does a turtle have? Let's look at the turtle API. What can we get from our turtles? We can move it forward and backwards these all four of these use fuel up but i'm pretty sure the turn left do not use fuel up uh we can dig we can place block we can drop items we can select an inventory slot we can get the number of items in our current inventory slot we can detect can we only detect if there's a solid block we can't detect what kind of block it is oh no we can get information about the block in front of the tur turtle okay that's good. We can pick up items, and we can yoink stuff from chests, I guess. Hmm. You can switch the tool and weapon within the turtle? How do I do that? Equip. I'm not seeing- oh, e equip left. Equip right. Oh, shit. Can you equip a crafting table? You can equip a crafting table! Oh, shit! Yes! This is becoming a lot more possible. Whole new possibilities. I now only need one turtle to get my empire started. How do I craft stuff? Because I know you can craft stuff, but how the fuck do you do that? Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying what I have to do is I have to go into the turtle's inventory, manually place a stick here and a stick here, and then a diamond here, like that? I have to do this? Craft an item if items in the turtle's inventory matches a valid recipe. Items can be placed anywhere as long as they are oriented properly with respect to each other. Will not craft if there are any items that are not pro- Oh, that's what it is. Will not craft if there are any items that are not part of the recipe, including in the slots not used for crafting. So what it is, is whenever I want to craft with a turtle, I'm gonna have to drop all of my items safely onto the ground, and then only- Oh, that's gonna be so hard to code, dude. That's gonna be so hard to code. Okay, okay, I'm excited now. I'm excited. So, let's construct an interface of what I could possibly ever want from the turtle. Interface, um, turtle. So what information does this turtle have? Can a turtle craft another turtle? Hell yeah, it can. Ooh, actually, how cheap are turtles to make? You need a turtle to make a turtle. To make a turtle, you need a computer. How do you make a computer? Redstone, stone, and a pane of glass. So I have to smelt. Turtles can interact with the furnaces. Okay. So they can put items into a furnace. I see, look at this dude's thing. Let's make a new folder called turtle. Uh, and then we'll make a new file startup.lua. So we wanna, we wanna do this eternally. We always want to receive a message from the WebSocket. And now that we have our response, uh, depends on what the message, can we, is there JSON? Can we parse JSON? Here's the JSON library. Wow, the library. Okay, let's, let's install this JSON library on the thing. That's the first message that I'm going to implement, an eval message which will allow me to run any kind of code that I want on the turtle. So what I want to do is I want to do app.expose function exec format error. What the fuck is this? I should not have printed this out. 
Okay, well, this is happening. Okay, we connected. Now we run this. Local funk is still a nil value. Okay. Okay, so we need. I do need to return one plus one, it looks like. Maybe that is the problem. Eval two! Look, it printed out two! Nice! Nice! Okay, now all we have to do is technically, if Ludwig typed this code into the turtle on the offline TV server, I could make it do anything I wanted it to. Such as place a block. Or let's let's try this. Okay, turtle, you sit here. Okay, take a, keep an eye on the turtle over here, chat. It works! It works! I can move the turtle from this. Let's go. I can make it turn right as well if I wanted. Boom, turns right. I could make it craft items. I could make it break blocks. Oh, let's try making it break, break blocks. How do you make a turtle break blocks? No, let's make it suck an item up. Put a chest above the turtle with a uh, block of dirt in it. Then we run this code Then we look in the chest. No dirt block, dirt block is in the turtle. Let's go. <laughs> So now we have a turtle that we can remote control. Yes! Yes, I love it! <laughs> okay, we got one turtle. Turn turtle. It works! Yes! It works! Okay, so chat, this is this is what I'm envisioning right now. Alright, bear with me. Bear with me. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make you a diagram. Diagram time. Alright, so we want tabs up here. Turtle one. We can give them all names. Maybe we'll uh Maybe we'll make a randomly generated name thing. This is the cool part, chat. This is what I want to do. I want to make a 3D wireframe that looks something like this. Each of these is a Minecraft block. And what we'll have is we will have this display the turtle. Okay, there's our turtle sitting right there. You visualize the direction it's looking in somehow. Like we draw a little arrow. Or like a little face, maybe. So we don't actually know what the Minecraft world looks like from the, from the point of view of our turtle. All we know about are the blocks on top of it in front of it and under it. So all we know for sure is this block here, this block right here, which is air, and this block up here, which is also air. But the thing is, if the turtle then walks forward, like if the turtle walks like this, then the turtle's now sitting here. I, I can guess with pretty high success rate that these blocks are still what they were when I last walked over them. Someone probably didn't just come up and break this block or come up and replace this block with something else. So what I'll do is I'll kind of outline the world from the turtle's knowledge, from what I, from where the turtle has moved so far. I'll have like camera control so I can like right click to get a different viewpoint and I'll use WASD to move. The other thing we'll have is we'll have like a little inventory up here probably. There's 16 blocks in the inventory so we'll have 16 little squares displaying which one is selected and what the items are in it. And then we'll have like a keyboard shortcut for placing a block in front, on top, below, breaking blocks. Then we'll do some kind of highlighting where all the blocks we don't know about are red maybe. And we highlight the ones that we do know about for sure green. And then we highlight the ones that we don't know about or that we might know about yellow. So yeah, that's the plan. The plan is definitely not simple. Okay, let's go uh, implement them. So we need, we need some kind of library that'll let us draw wireframe 3D blocks. 3.js is good at doing 3D, I know that much. Almost too much. It can do this. So we got our box now. Box is good. We want to render a box inside the canvas. Uh... Okay, here's our cube now. Why is it so zoomed in? Okay, look at this. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Now I just have to make it semi-transparent uh, and red. So I just do color equals red, transparent, and then opacity equals... 0.5. Ah, perfect! Let's go! What I don't have is the world. What we need, what we needed to, in order to make this representation of the world, is we need to save all of this data. Like, we need to remember consistently, even when the program closes, what blocks are where. So there's a couple different options on how we can do that. Option one, we could do that inside the turtle. We can go into Minecraft. Inside the turtle script here, we could store a history of all the blocks we've walked over. That is stupid and I'm not doing that because turtles are so slow compared to every other piece of code that I can write. So that is that is not how I'm gonna do it. There's a couple other options. One I, one is I could store it in the back end. So basically every time a turtle moves, the back end could remember. Okay, here's a here's a here's an option. The turtle starts at zero zero. Whenever we tell the turtle to move forward, we just say, oh, now the turtle is at one zero. Every time we move the turtle, we increment or decrement the position. So then what we do is at every time we move, we want to get the blocks around. And we can only get three of the blocks. The one in front of the turtle, which is right here. The one on top of the turtle. And the one underneath the turtle. So these are the three blocks that we can read. We would store a, a map that maps a position to the block. 
the block data. So basically what I need is I need a file format that stores a Minecraft world. Okay, how do we do that? Um, well, this should be in the back end. So I have these four functions, uh, forward, back, up, down, actually also left and right. So what, what I want to do is instead of just saying, okay, move the turtle forward, I want to say, move the turtle forward and then update the blocks around you and save those to your memory. Let's just use node JSON DB. It is a JSON file, which is not the best database, but it works. So this world stores a database in the constructor. I initialize the database, this.db equals new json db we want to we now want a function called update block uh which will take an x position a y position and a z position and it would push the data so this updates the block fine this is cool let's write a get block function we want get block um at x y z we want to return this dot db dot get data the data path would just be this okay so this is all we need for the world storage but we also need we also need turtles to remember where they are. Here's the thing. A turtle has a label. What is the default label? No computer label. Label set hello. Now it has a name. Can I set this label via code? I can change the label to talk to people. That is actually hilarious. If the turtle does have a label, then we just set the label of this object equal to what the label is already. But if the turtle doesn't have a label, we want to we want to come up with the label. List of first names. Look at that chat. That's plenty of names. So this should work. Now, this should set a random name on a, any robot who boots up and doesn't have a name. Now, let's go to our index file and let's do const world equals new world. So this will just initialize a world. Uh, when we initialize the world, it obviously reads the database. But what we need to do, in addition to storing all the blocks in the world, we actually need to store where the turtles are. Because if a turtle shuts down, or not if a turtle shuts down. If a turtle shuts down, we can't really get it back, which is kind of cringe. If the program shuts down that's driving the turtles, it has to remember the X, Y, and Z position of all the turtles so they don't reset at zero, zero, zero. Let's make an update turtle function. It'll provide a turtle, which is a turtle object, and then it'll provide an, provide an X, a Y, and a Z. Let's just push X, Y, Z because we can actually push an array here. That'll be easier. And then we'll do get turtle. We'll just return a list of three numbers. There we go. The next thing I need to do is when I move forward, first move forward and then run await this dot update position. And what this update position function is going to do is it's going to scan the blocks all around me. Also update what the X, Y, and Z coordinate of myself are. So let's make an update position function. Oh, this is actually difficult. Up is easy. Up is always going to be Y direction, but forward and backwards, they depend on the directions. Okay, so if this dot direction equals direction dot north, this dot Z, north was negative Z, we said? Negative Z, yeah. I think I'm just going to do this for all four directions. So for east, X plus plus, for south, Z plus plus, and for west, uh, X minus minus. So now we just copy this four times. Well, no, we copy it one time because we only have forward and back that need this logic in it. So forward and back. And then we just invert these. So Z plus plus, X minus minus, Z minus minus, X plus plus. Easy enough. And then turning left and turning right. So case left. If we turn left, this dot D minus minus. If we're at zero and we turn left, we want to do this dot D plus plus and this dot D mod equals four. We got all of our possible movements now. All right. We look at this again. Startup. It worked. Olympic Garland is our first robot. Yay. We can take a selfie together. Now if I disconnect and reconnect Olympi... Oh no, it renamed her to Kissy Sadler. olympy has gone forever. She was so young. Minutes, minutes old. Kissy's, Kissy's gonna die as well in the course of testing, unfortunately. She will have to be sacrificed for the cause. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are, seem to be fine with me murdering another soul. Kyla Lene is turtle number three. Kissy's dead, guys. We've killed Kissy. Kyla might die. She might not die. There's a chance. There's a chance she might survive, chat. Ah, she died. Floria Zong. Ah, see, here we go. Now we have the inventory, we have the label, we have the X, Y, and Z, and the D, the direction. Turn turtle. It worked. And now I should have the actual direction of the turtle in here. The direction should now be two. It is two, look, it's two. And now if I press it once more, direction is one. <laughs> Let's go. I should build this model in Blender. This will be a full tutorial from downloading Blender to making your first 3D model that is literally just a cube with a pickaxe on it. We'll not even do the pickaxe. It's literally just a cube. But first of all, you want to press next a couple times. This is very important. Then you want to press install. And then you should see this cancel button. You don't want to press that. You might be tempted, but really don't want to do that. Also this X, no, no. Just use restraint. Don't even move your mouse if you don't have to. All right, then you want to press finish. You want to load up Blender. So Blender always starts with the cube. Now that we have a cube, we want to look at what the model looks like. It hovers slightly above the ground. It has like kind of squiggly things on the bottom. 
a slit in the front where it's looking. It's holding a pickaxe, but we're not gonna do the pickaxe part. And it has a backpack on the back. Oh, well, we got it! We have created Minecraft Cube. It shouldn't be turtle.json, it should be turtle.obj. <gasps> it's- there's something there. It, it's right, it just doesn't have the texture. Nice! We have a turtle, officially. <laughs> this is what I need to do. First of all, go to, um, index, remove the world. Second of all, go to turtle, and put in here an extra div that will have a json.stringify turtle, just in case. And then world will also pass into the turtle to the world. And now, Instead of position 0, 1, 0, we instead do position is turtle.x, turtle.y, turtle.z. Okay, I want to fuel up this turtle. Let's make a little script just to fuel up. Turtle.refuel. Save. Uh, now I have to get some coal blocks, I think. Put that in there. Run this script. So now I should be able to move you. So now instead of mapping the turtle to a button that turns the turtle less, I want to I map the turtle to a world. Whole turtle world. Okay, so now in turtle, right here, I want to add the button back. Let's do turn left and let's do forward. Now, we run the app that connects to Minecraft. Okay, so now the app is open. Now we activate Floria. Startup. Floria connects. And we get an error. Wait, I don't understand this. Okay, let's try this one more time. Startup. Oh, it didn't crash. Servers cannot use import statement. Oh no, not this again! Chat! I thought we fixed this. No. This should fix it. This should fix it. This should fix it. This should please fix it. Oh, shit! Look, 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 look! If we press the move button, keep an eye on Minecraft, chat. Move. Okay, we got an error. Oh, I know what that error is. Okay, here we go, chat. Startup. Populated. Here she is, at zero, zero, zero. We now press the move button. And it works! Holy shit, do you see that? Do you see that chat? Holy shit! Holy shit! Let's go! Let's go! Oh! It works! It actually works! The next step is rendering the world around the, the, the fucking turtle. And so what we need to do is whenever this world changes, we need to update it. We need to send that to the, uh, to the front end. Okay, what we want is, we want instead of get blocks, we want to say, we have a, we want to have a get all blocks function. And then when I do this, I would do, um, const map equals this dot db dot get data slash world. So that should just get all of it. I should get the entire world. Uh, so I'm just gonna make it green if it's a known block, yellow if it's an unknown block, and red if it's- or nothing else. So now what we need to do is we need to make the turtle- every time it moves, it needs to update the world. So how do I get the block? Inspect. And here we got it. State snowy false name me minecraft.grass metadata zero. So we got that there's grass at this position. So let's make the robot like a little house that he can explore. Or she, I guess. Alright, here's the maze. Floria, you go here. Oh, look at this, look at this. It actually works. Let's hide Minecraft and navigate through the maze. Okay. Block there. Block there. Be a bit easier if I could turn right. Move. Move. Turn. Move. Oh, there's a block above me? Oh, this might be a race condition, actually. There's no block in front of me, so we go forward again. Now there's a block in front of me. There's another block that direction. No block that direction, we move. No block in front of me again, we move. Okay, we're against a wall. We turn. We move. Did I just escape the maze? <laughs> I sure did! Holy shit, chat. One more thing I want to do before I end. Let's make this yellow and make them all fully opaque. Yeah, that is less confusing. Okay, one more thing, one more thing. I want to center the camera around the player. Okay, I know how to do this. All we have to do is target equals turtle.x, turtle.y, turtle.z. Now, does this center it around my player? It sure does, and that is so much better. 
But now when I move, it'll actually be centered around the turtle. Chat, look at this. This is so cool. I'm so happy about this. Anyway, good night, chat. Thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow. Let's get WASD working. If ev.code equals key A, so if you press A, turtle dot turn left. Else, and then we'll just copy this four times for all WASD. And also space and shift for moving up and down. Uh, so now we haven't actually defined the back and the up and down function. So we just have to go here and add back, up, down. That should be all. Now this should work. Now I should be able to use WASD to control it. W. It works! I want to distinguish these blocks somehow. Currently, they're all yellow. Uber suggested that I should give each block a unique color based on the hash of the block ID. All right, so if we look at our world, currently, all we have here is color equals yellow. That's all we're doing. Do props equals mesh props and color is a string. And then here we can put props.color. And then right here, we just need to provide the color. So color equals world k dot name. How do I hash a string in JavaScript? So now I should have a hash code function. Hash code world k dot name modulo... 360. Who is that? Saturation will say 60, lightness will say 40. Oh look, it works. Each block has a random color. Obviously it's not the correct color, but it's better than having every block be the same color. So the next thing, actually, chat, I need to make it so that if there's no block, it actually removes the block. If this.db.exists data path, then we delete it, and then we update. So this should work. So now it should delete blocks. So now if we control the turtle, go over the water, now it removes it, it replaces it with air. To do, place blocks, break blocks, craft items, refuel, display current fuel level, show block name on mouse over, drop item, change inventory slot, pathfinding, yoink items, move items in inventory, equip items, interface with peripherals. Ooh, place signs. All right, let's get started. So how should I implement this? Should I make, should I make it maybe like you right click a block, like there's a little context menu that says break, or should I make like buttons that say break in front, break up, break down? Do you guys think arrows that do it? I'm fine with that. All right then, we need to add buttons to this. Currently, all that's in the turtle page is the world renderer. Currently this div has max width. Let's not do that. Let's do dot 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 props, dot 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 props here. So anything extra will be passed to the div. Here we use our handy dandy macro that now there should be a button and we'll make the button be say like break okay there's a button that says break nice i kind of want there to be three buttons left one says up middle one has the pickaxe right one says down okay here we go chat let's go it works and i can dig downwards as well and i can move now i can go on a murderous rampage what's the next step chat oh let's let's look at our to-do list break blocks check let's work on the inventory now well no let's work on the fuel level first okay so at the top we have our button group Next to the button group, we want a little fuel bar. Let's make this whole thing a div. Move the button group inside the div. Basically, we want a linear progress bar. So we basically just want to take this and use this as fuel. Oh, circular is so much more cool. Yeah, I want to do that. Ah, there we go. So we're 51% depleted on the fuel. So we got fuel. Let's do inventory now. So we have to make a 4x4 grid. Is there like a material UI grid that I could just use and then plot my stuff into? I can make there be a 4x4 grid of elements in a space that is fit for them to be square. So grid container class name equals classes dot inventory. And then we want 16 grid items. I don't want to do those all manually. So we'll do instead turtle dot inventory dot map item goes to a new grid item. That looks right. The problem with this is that words don't fit well in tiny boxes. So I'll probably just display a big number that indicates how many of that item I have. And then when you hover over it, it'll tell you what item it is. Oh, it does work. Look, I hover over it. It says Minecraft.dirt, obsidian, diamond. So then I want to be able to maybe right click this and then have a context menu come up. Or maybe I just click it and it selects slots. And then I have a button up here that's like drop and a button that says place. How are we going to signify that which slot is selected? If this is the selected slot, then the class name will be selected. So now we know which slot selected. Okay, so now what I just need to do is add some buttons that say place and drop. So we'll go to here, add another button group. I want to make this a different button group, I think. Okay, here we are. We have dirt selected right now. So let's say I want to fill up this gap in the floor right here. Press place. Holy shit, it works, chat. It works. Day three. Off stream, I've done a bit of work. Here we are. You hover over blocks, it actually tells you what it is. Let's look at our to-do list. Show block name on mouse over. That's done. You only get items from chests. We don't have that yet. Let's do the sucking the same way we did everything else. So we have three buttons. Suck forward, suck up, suck down. 
go to our turtle here and just add another three buttons. Okay, so now we need an icon for sucking. So you suggested Kirby. I don't know how I feel about Kirby. There's no grab icon? Okay, hand then. Okay, uh, so we have to just import the hand. Wait, I don't see any hands. Wait a second. Are there any alternate names for this that I'm not seeing? Okay, so it's named Pan Tool. That makes sense. Sure. <laughs> Pan Tool. Okay. Now we need to add the turtle suckiness to the index.tsx right here. Perfect. So now I can suck up items. Let's put a chest right here with some monitors in it, I guess. There she goes. Move her up to the chest. And then suck. Hey, it worked. We got two computer craft slash peripherals. Uh, let's do refueling next. Well, let's, let's, let's work on making this bar up here a bit prettier. What if I made my toolbar slightly taller and I filled it with vertical button groups? Then it would take up much less horizontal space. I think that's actually a good idea. Oh yeah, I like this a lot better already. Because the up and down now actually makes sense. Look at this chat. This is a sign of bad code. Compare these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code to these seven lines of code. What's the difference? This text right here and this text right here. Everything else is exactly the same. That's a sign that you should be using something that is not like this. So I, I think there's an automatic way to do this. Extract to function in module scope. Yeah, we'll call this a uh, turtle button group. So now I can get rid of this and look, what was once 28 lines of code has now turned into four and it's much more readable. I now need a way to move items in my inventory. So how do I do a right click menu? So now for each for each item in the grid right here, we wanna do on context menu equals handle click. Now if I right click, it should pop up something. Ah, perfect. So let's look at our to-do list. Equip items, not done. Interface with peripherals, not done. Place signs. Okay, let's do place signs first. You press this place button. If the item is a sign, it pops up a little dialog box and then you enter in the sign text. How do we do that? Well, we just have to go to here. We look at the place button. Then we have to make a dialog. So that's pretty easy. Dialog. Dialog content, which is gonna have a text box in it. And then there are gonna be buttons. One button is gonna say cancel. And the other button is gonna say place. Okay, there we go. Now we got our sign. So now if we place, ah, see, perfect. It opens up a dialogue where it says sign text. So what happens if I have a super long sign text? Does it just get cut off? Yeah. Okay. So then if we do a uh, test backslash n test, does that put it on two lines? It does. So I can use new lines. Perfect. To make sure that the plan succeeded, we obviously needed more than one turtle. Problem is, to make another turtle, you need some pretty hefty materials. It's hard to get logs, it's hard to get diamonds when you can't see the world in front of you. This was going to be a big task, but I did code it. Once I had all the materials, all I needed to do was place down a new turtle and inject my current turtle's code into it and turn it on. It would automatically connect to me and I could control two turtles at once instead of one. Sabina, online. The world is empty. She can't see anything, but she feels the urge to reproduce. And so, she undergoes mitosis. Boom. And now, there are two. Does Floor know where she is? She sure does know where she is! She knows where she is! And it's accurate! They meet each other for the first time. Turtle to turtle. Who's love at first sight? Let me just go through what we're gonna do today, chat. Yeah, so step one, crafting. Crafting, 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 crafting. Crafting is quite difficult because it means that we have to throw out all the items in our inventory that don't fit the crafting recipe. And what we want to do is we want to be able to move items in our inventory. And I actually started working on that. You'll see if I go to inv the inventory file, I made a right click menu. I just have to make it so that the right click menu allows you to move items in your inventory. So let's have a button for move all and move one. Maybe move all, move half, move one. So now we want to do this, all half one. Amount would be all half one. All we have to do is we have to do Turtle dot move items amount. We don't have a move items property yet on the turtle, so let's make that property. Should be as easy as that. Okay, we need to do. I have been putting it off. We need to do the mining thing. The mining thing. I had been putting it off, and the reason was that my current code only allowed me to control one turtle at a time. There was nothing in there that allowed me to switch between turtles while leaving the other one running in the background. And that was pretty necessary for collecting resources on the server. So it took me a while, it took me 60 lines of code over here, and a bunch more over here. But once it was done, everything was ready. I just had to call up Ludwig and tell him he should install the first turtle on the server. Auto! Yo. Talk to me, brother. What's going on today? What's the agenda? What's the plan? All right, all right. Uh, the plan, it's, it's, I mean, I don't want to say it. Don't fucking say it. Do not no. say it. That is my IP. 
I will sue you with the entire law of the goddamn arm. Oh, all right. It was, it was, it was pretty complicated on my, on, okay. On good, my good, 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 good. We like that. We like that. It should be pretty easy on your end though. Okay. Okay. I need a turtle. That's step one. So we got pick turtle, uh, and crafting table. Now you just need the disc drive and the floppy disk. Uh, we have a floppy disk. Nice. Now just a disk drive. Okay, I made that. That's all the materials. So now the next yeah. step, place down the disk drive and place the floppy disk inside the disk drive. All right, now you want to click on the turtle, run a single line of code. Sure. Is this, are we, are we thinking, is this Java for this or? Uh, it's actually, well, I think it's just shell code. Sure, shell code, shell code makes sense. And there it is. So, okay, we just gotta do a, obviously, paste bin get, because we are pulling this from the code I uh, sent you earlier. We're gonna do a, yep, uh, caps matter, of course. Uh, boom. You misspelled it. It's an, you put an X instead of C. What, what did I, fuck. All right, uh, now you just wanna type in reboot and press enter. Goodbye. Now you break the disk drive. Pull it or get rid of the whole thing? Uh, you want to have both the floppy disk and the disk drive itself in your inventory. Uh, and then you want to right click on the turtle and put them in the turtle's inventory. You'll see there's like 16 slots to the right. I did that. Last step, uh, you just need to fuel the turtle. So you need to get some like coal or coal blocks. I think coal box blocks are more efficient. I got five blocks. That's pretty good. Oh, that's more than enough. That can make the turtle walk for like 4,000 blocks. Oh, it's spinning. Oh, why is it called Psyche? Is this like Cap? Uh, it's from it's from Greek mythology. I, I named them all after Greek myths. I oh, really oh, Psyche, the god of Psyche, the god of mind goddess of control. Something. Yeah, probably. All right, and fueled up. Psyche's now online. So now, uh, I can make Psyche mine for you. Uh, but it has to be in a loaded chunk. I think. Wait, what the your fuck? Face is chunk loaded, right? Why is it moving? Because it's sentient. It's it's sentient. Sentient, however you want to say it. English major, so correctly probably. Are you controlling this right now? Yes. Are you gonna eventually set up that you don't have to control it? Uh, well, I don't have to make it mine. It can, it can mine automatically, but uh, I can also assume manual control. What if it falls in lava? It's invisible. It's invincible to lava. Is it invincible to me? No, you can just break her and then she'll be dead. That's what I thought, bitch. I made a I made a whole thing for this on stream, uh, and it is quite pog. Psyche can only see the blocks directly around her, uh, so she's basically mapped out this tunnel that she's dug down and some of the blocks on your floor. Huh. Ooh, we are in, boys. Here I am, controlling Psyche. Ooh, we got redstone. We needed redstone. Redstone is needed to self-replicate. Oh, we have so much coal. We're so lucky. We're so lucky. We got the coal early. This means we're going to easily be able to fuel our next turtles. Okay, let's look at the crafting materials for a new turtle. Seven iron ingots, two logs, seven smooth stone, one redstone, one glass pane, three diamonds. Okay, biggest things here. Diamonds, glass pane, because we need sand and logs. We have everything else, chat. Um, oh, sand! Sand! We need sand! We need sand for glass. Pog! Six sand. Okay, that's enough for 16 more turtles. Okay, this is already going so much better than I thought it would. Now we're on the surface, aren't we? So this is Lud's furnace array. If Ludwig sees this at any point, make sure you, you tell me, because that's going to be so funny. Ludwig's just going to see Psyche just exploring the base, just walking around using the furnaces. Are you guys excited for Thanksgiving tomorrow? <sighs> Anyone doing anything? Oh shit. Why are none of you guys doing anything? All right, let's start mining. Let's find some diamonds, chat. I could Ty Smith, but I don't really need that at the moment. Oh, diamonds! We found diamonds! We found diamonds, chat! Huh! Let's go! One diamond, here we go, one diamond. 
Another diamond. Nice. Three diamonds. That's enough for one turtle. Any more? Any more? Holy shit. Four diamonds? We're getting lucky today, boys. Oh, another diamond. Two more diamonds. Holy shit. We're lucky as shit. Six diamond vein? Seven? Holy shit. Eight? Eight diamonds. I'm going to give love two of these diamonds. The turtle has a gift for me. Ooh! <laughs> Yo! A couple diamonds for Peepa? Thank you. Good psych. He stole the diamonds. I was giving him the diamonds. Did he dupe the diamonds by accident? <laughs> oh, hilarious. Accidental dupe. We now have six logs. That's enough to make two diamond pickaxes. Oh, no, we got our diamond. That's enough to make uh, two chests and enough to make two turtles. All right, let's go. We're gonna duplicate ourselves, chat. Let's hope this works. Otto, why is my chat a, bu a buzz? Uh, I'm about to reproduce if you want to watch. Is it cool? Pretty cool, yeah. It's gonna be a new Greek god. Get an aerial view and tell me when you're ready. Hold up. Boom. What? Wait, what? did it just eat its creator? It's Hades. What? And now I can control both of them. Separately or at the same time? Well, I can make them both mine at the same time and I can take control individually. What? Do it again, have more sex. Okay, okay, if you want. Wait, you could split again? <laughs> what? We were finally successful. We'd found the diamonds. We'd reproduced. Next step was just to impress Michael Reeves. Sadly, just after this amazing success, Terpsichore disconnected from the server and died. Can I reboot Terpsichore? I can reboot my program, but I can't reboot her. I can try. I can try to reboot Terpsichore. Okay, I think she's in front of me, but she's invisible because she's offline. So if I break her... Okay, I, I have her now. She's here! She's bugged. She thinks that she's in the wrong place. Okay, I have to place her back in the exact direction I put her in. Yeah, so this should be right. Place peripheral dot call front turn on. Terpsichore's back! Nice! She's alive, chat! Abe's real close to the turp. He's looking for them? He's looking for them? What's he trying to do? Hey, Lun, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, what's up? Who's who's Otto? Otto? Yeah, who's Otto? Uh, he's 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 my um he's a developer. Oh. Why? I heard I heard there was a person on the server named Otto. Oh, I don't see anyone on the server named Otto. Yeah, me neither. But Are they online? I'm all saying. No, but I was told that there's someone on the server named Otto. Huh. I don't know. You what... wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? No. Oh, nope. okay. Well, just, just, just thought I'd, just thought I'd ask. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay. More the merrier, though. Even if you do find him. What, what, what does that mean? You know, more the merrier. Abe's in Ludwig's stream, and Ludwig was watching me. Wow. <laughs> real, real nice one, Lud. He covered well. Abe's in chat right now. We should get this iron. Need iron always. Oh, hi, hi, Ed. Uh, I'm just uh, 3D rendering. Nothing going on here. This is just a 3D model. Yeah, we're just uh coding. This is a coding only stream. We never play Minecraft here. Yeah, as one does, as one does, 3D models. Nor the fact that it says turtle control panel. What's this? A lot of limes, limestone. I mean, uh, orange cube. Not Minecraft related. It's Abe Sillier. Shit. Here I go. Modeling. Give fell for a chat. A little guy in my chat uh, mentioned something about a turtle virus? Virus? Like an epidemic or something? Yeah, like a like something about robots. I noticed you're kind of getting into the robots as well. I wouldn't. Virus is such a funny word. 
Um, do we call like babies viruses? Like, I mean, I guess, but like, you know, um, I am fostering some turtles. If you ever want to show me those turtles, I do love seeing robotics and coding in Minecraft. It is so cool to me. Oh, you want to see the turtles? Yeah, sure. All right. Auto show the turtles. I'll keep it a buck. This turtle is more so like, you know, like I'm taking care of them, but I'm not creating them. You know what I mean? I am Steve Jobs minus the bald and, uh, and, and Wazowski and the is the guy. Well, yeah. yeah, true that. And Wazowski is behind the scenes doing all the work. Come me straight up. Wait, that's, that's right. Mike Wazowski. I, Whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, Oh, there he is. Oh, did you look at that? His name's Hades. Hello. What is he, what is he doing? I can't control Hades anymore. He must have killed him. Uh, wh what's going on here? Wow, oh, this is really cool. Look at, oh, wow. You just looking inside, or? I'm just having a little looky in his head, you know? Looky in his head. <laughs> looky in the head. He's not <laughs> moving the same, though. Did you notice that? It seems like he's... Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I give him a little little nap time just to looky in the and then you And then you wake him right back up, you know? How are you, like, getting... A large amount of turtles, like for Endgame, you know. Do you, do you have a turtle on you, Michael? I do. He always got his disk drive too. Oh, he carries his own disk drive, right? So he's gonna place down the disk drive and boot the software onto the turtle he places down. Chad, it's big brain. He's a savant at 17 years old. He write the code. Man, some people are just like that. They're fucking nuts. The messages in a in a second. Right. So that's. Right, so this oh, is like yeah, the bootloader, right? Right, 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 right. He reproduces himself. That is sick. Welcome, Fisby. Yeah. That is some good ideas. I love that. Well, it's uh, it's all auto, and uh, and I just reaped all the rewards. That is pretty <laughs> sick. That's really cool, actually. Man, I gotta check that uh, stream out. That is so cool. He like oh. generates hey, a Michael, 3D map. map. Right, right. There's the turtles. I can switch between them by clicking. Oh, that is such uh, cool software. With WSD. Wow, that is fucking it's sick! It took like a week on stream. I'm gonna try to make a YouTube video out of it. That's so goddamn cool. You got the sick. power to whitelist me, right? <laughs> I don't have the oh. power to whitelist him. <laughs> uh, a bastard. <laughs> I cannot wait to see his YouTube video on that. After the success of the Turtles, it was time to program Ludwig's Casino. You probably have seen it. So I spent the next couple days on stream doing that, and eventually, Abe was so impressed by everything I'd done for the server that he decided to whitelist me. If you liked this video, make sure to hit the like button, and if you really liked it, subscribe. Literally less than 1% of my viewers are subscribed. Let's get that to at least 2%. If you want to see the full source code for this entire project, it's on my Patreon at patreon.com automated. For the lowest tier, you can get access to all of the code, including my casino blackjack and roulette code. Make sure that you check out Seth Loves to Talk on YouTube, who edited this whole thing. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Have a good day.